Amazing. Uh, so we would like to talk about our collaboration with uh, the uh, Borussian Drama Center, which is based on the Borussian uh, Theater of Drama. And I will start with actually talking about new Belarusian drama. Here's a funny slide for you with a meme. <laughs> so new Belarusian... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll give you some time. <laughs> So, uh, New Belarusian Drama uh, is a movement in contemporary theater in Belarus. Uh, it emerged in early 2000s as a reaction to, um, as a strong reaction to a political situation, a social situation in Belarus also uh, connected with the dictatorship and the state of country, the uh, degradating state of country. Uh, and the main traits of, of this drama uh, movement, the first one is absurdism and intertextuality, that means that the uh, plays are very often absurd, it has absurd situation in them, and now they also use uh, other texts and cultural references to shape their texts, and they are mostly references from um, popular culture, especially Belarusian popular culture. Uh, the second trait is uh, focusing on degradation. So lots of characters in this place are from very non-privileged backgrounds. They are drug addicts or people who come from, uh, with, for example, mental health problem and stuff. So uh, there's no noble heroes as it was in classical uh, drama, classical Belarusian drama. And the third trait is uh, they are very often are tragic comedies. So they uh, speak about very tragic, very sad events with the use of sarcasm and with of humor and uh, comedy. Uh, the next one is uh, they all of marginal nature. So they use lots of foul language, lots of coarse words, and the very controversial situations uh, in them. And the last one, uh, they're actually very connected to our real life. So they use lots of uh, references to the names of the streets in Minsk, for example, or to uh, mass culture to different TV shows or movies and stuff. Uh, so, why? Why we decided to do this collaboration? Why the theater decided to, to do collaboration with us? Uh, okay, the obvious reason for us is we wanted to be as artsy as possible, <laughs> but there were, there were other reasons, yeah. Uh, I'll start with the reasons uh, for the drama center to actually contact us and ask us to collaborate with them. So the first one is their difficulty in actually getting uh, Belarusian new drama to the main stage of big theaters because of the sometimes political or very social nature of this place, of the use of foul language. It's very difficult for them to be seen by many people. So they try to use different approaches, not only uh, making like readings of theaters, uh, doing the readings of theaters or the actually the, uh, the uh, shows but they tried to find other ways to get people familiar with these works. And the second one is um, the desire to be more interactive, which is, I think, a kind of a global trend in theater. So people, uh, theater people look for ways to interact with audiences and to uh, kind of, you know, merge the audience and the actors and stuff. Uh, so, and the next one is actually uh, this reason came from the authors of the plays that we worked with because they're, they're very modern people and they're keen on um, the idea of exploring the topics in their place or exploring their pl place in different ways. For example, one of the authors uh, used, actually used to be a role player uh, in, his, in his youth and he was very excited when he learned that we are going to make a LARP out of his play. It was, yeah. Uh, and for us, actually, the reasons why we did this, uh, for us, it was the first one uh, was very obvious. We actually enjoy Belarusian new drama. We want other people to learn about it. We actually didn't know a lot before this, about it before this uh, collaboration, but then we got to read lots of plays and we got into this idea that this is a cool thing that very few people know about. So we wanted to actually make other people learn ab uh, know about it. Uh, the next one is they use political and social background and we represent an uh, NGO that also works with social issues. So it's kind of this aims blended. So we wanted to raise these topics with our work and it could be even better if we use other forms of art, for example, theater. 
Uh, and the next one is like we used adaptations of not very familiar works and we were very free to experiment with LARP design without the fear of not meeting expectations of people, for example, who would come to play uh, Romeo and Juliet LARP or something like this. So we had an idea that we could, we could actually be free to do whatever we want and people won't, you know, throw uh, tomatoes at us in the <laughs> end. Uh, yeah, and the last one, uh, we actually wanted to experiment with theater readings before LARP as a part of workshop to kind of start with it and then to blend the readings into workshop and to uh, make um, audience plunge into the atmosphere of the play before the LARP. So this was also our idea to do this. And Sonia is, uh, is going to, to tell uh, more about it and she is going to talk also about LARPs we wrote. Yeah. Here it is. Well, um, then a miracle happened. Uh, it was an incredibly productive autumn and we created two LARPs. Uh, the first one was based on a play called Sympathy, which is written by Maxime Desco. Uh, uh, it's an incredibly interesting play about a random guy called Lyoshka, who realizes he has a lot of anger inside he, uh, himself and um, he finds the best way to let it out by uh, getting drunk, uh, provoking conflicts, fights, and uh, beating other people. Uh, and in the end, uh, he listens to a very sad, sad song about a dying stray cat, drinks a lot of vodka, cries, drinks a lot of vodka again, uh, breaks down, and decides to become a better person. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, well, we decided to use our imagination and um, play around with what could happen after and not to center the LARP around the events described in the play. Uh, so, we chose a main character who can slightly remind you of Lyoshka, but not necessary. And uh, it was a LARP about him uh, and uh, his family getting reunited. Um, well, uh, what else? Oh, there was a second LARP. Um, the second LARP is called Bzik, and it's written by Alexei Makejic, uh, and it's a LARP, uh, the play is about uh, people abusing drugs. So uh, we created three acts, three techno parties. After each party, there was a lottery, when players were taking papers that had written uh, things, both material and not, on them that their characters lost due to their addiction. Uh, in this LARP, uh, the setting was almost the same as in the play. And uh, we wanted our participants to dive into the atmosphere described in the play by the author. Uh, and well, maybe we managed to. <laughs> uh, both LARPs had, um, uh, with the help of uh, actors and directors from the Republican Belarusian Drama Theatre, before both LARPs we had readings of a uh, place uh, or some extracts from them uh, to help the participants uh, get into the flow of LARP. Uh, and what can I say? We managed to make our players cry even before LARP by <laughs> making them listen to this very sad, sad, song, sad song about a dying stray cat. <laughs> mm, and maybe you are interested in uh, what results we managed to achieve. If not, I'm going to share them anyway. So. Um, <laughs> We managed to draw attention of theater goers, uh, actors, people who work professionally with theater to LARPs. And uh, we played around with exploring Belarusian background and um, reality without going away from it, meaning we didn't use any abstract setting or abstract tools. We just put them, uh, the players into kind of uh, a small variant of uh, the current situation. And our plans for the future are quite ambitious. Uh, we are planning on conquering the world. <laughs> uh, we want to translate both plays and uh, LARP screens into English and uh, go international. Uh, <laughs> and also we are planning on carrying on our experiments with uh, theatrical reading before uh, LARPs as a part of pre-LARP workshop. And that's it. Yeah.